Hi everybody, my name is Ian Hillman and let's take some time to talk about the Internet of Things. And um, let's see, what are non-Internet of Things? You know, let's see, things like mobile phones, tablets, PCs, laptops, and things like fixed line phones. Because the Internet of Things is, you know, including all B2B and consumer devices that are connected. And you'd really want to know what is it? And how does it work? It is interesting. And it's a kind of system of interrelated computing devices that are mechanical, digital machines, objects, animals, or even people that are provided with unique identifiers, which are known as UIDs, and the ability to transfer data over a network without requiring any human to human or human to computer interaction. So, a good question would be like, if you look at your mobile phone, does it belong to the Internet of Things devices? Because as long as the device is able to connect to the Internet and has sensors that transmit data, one would think that it can be considered an Internet of Things device. But strangely enough, your smartphone can do both, but it's not an Internet of Things device. And you'll find smartphones, they do play a large role in the Internet of Things, actually. But... Internet of Things devices can be controlled through an app on an iPhone. So it's the apps actually, and you can use your smartphone to communicate with your smart thermal start or to deliver the perfect temperature for you by the time you get home from work in your cozy home. And that's the way your smartphone can be a part of the IoT, the Internet of Things and machine learning by collecting data from your surrounding. And it makes the Internet of Things devices actually smart. It can actually adjust itself according to what it's learned. And it's actually artificial intelligence that helps computers to do something without being programmed by someone. And one would ask, how does it really work in simple words? Um, well, it consists of devices, sensors that talk through the cloud through some kind of connectivity. And once that data gets to the cloud, you know, a software processes it and might decide to perform an action, such as, you know, sending an alert or automatically adjusting the sensor's devices without needing the user to do it. And that would be the basic gist of the Internet of Things. And in everyday things, it's enabling human to human machine to machine and human to machine interactions that can shape how things like automobiles are operating. If you look at connected vehicles, it will have sensors that pick up information about their surrounding. Another important one would be things like Bluetooth. Bluetooth is very, very important. And it's a technology that is used a lot. And apart from being the ubiquitous solution for the hands-free calling and wireless transmission, you know, and transmission of audio. It's really leading in consumer and business internet of things. So virtually anything that's made smart in a way, because it enhances every aspect of a uh, life that's connected to things like artificial intelligence and these networks. And this can mean something as simple as enhancing your refrigerator, your cabinet, you know, to detect when you, you know, the milk is running out and uh, it places an order for you uh, with your preferred grocer and that could be something done with the internet of things and internet of things creates these small networks between its system devices and if we look at the sensors and without its sensors it really would lose its distinction because the sensors are important to define and transform internet of things from a passive network of devices of things and if we look at the devices as predicted, they've really become smaller, cheaper, and much more powerful over time. Because the current analytics, if we look at them, they give us superficial insight. And the Internet of Things gives real-world information that leads to, you know, effective management of resources. And if we look at the modern data collection, you know, it suffers from its limitations of this passive use. And IoT is breaking it out of those spaces and placing it exactly where the humans want to go to analyze our world the way that we experience it. And it gives an accurate picture of everything. It has its disadvantages. 
you know, because it's creating an ecosystem of constantly connected devices that are communicating over networks and the system is offering very little control despite any security measures that can be taken. And this leaves the users exposed to various different kinds of attackers. And if you look at the privacy aspect, you know, it also provides a lot of substantial data without the user's participation. And it's quite complex because the Internet of Things systems are complicated in terms of design. And so the deployment and the maintenance, given the multiple technologies, and people worry about finding themselves with several conflicting Internet of Things lock systems and compliancy, like any other technology, even in the software business, you find it has to comply. And it makes the issue of compliancy incredibly challenging, especially when people are considering standard software as a battle, as an uphill battle, and the Internet of Things is not making it easier. And it's exploiting standard protocols like network technologies and the major enabling technologies and protocols for the Internet of Things are things like RFID, NFC, low energy Bluetooth, low energy wireless and low energy radio protocols like LTA and Wi-Fi Direct. These are just some of them. And these technologies are supporting the specific network functionality that's needed in the Internet of Things system in contrast to a standard uniform of network of common systems. And NFC and RFID, well, RFID, which stands for Radio Frequency Identification, and NFC, uh, Near Field Communication, these provide a very simple, low-energy, versatile option for identity access tokens. And NFC consists of communication protocols, for electronic devices. And this would be typically a mobile device and a standard device. And uh, we'll end it here. So don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe, you know, hit the bell icon for notifications. And uh, we will continue with uh, more information about the Internet of Things and other topics. So let's just keep in touch. Thank you for your attention and uh, check out some of the other videos.